So the final big release for 2019 coming to us from Nintendo for the Nintendo Switch, Pokemon Sword and Shield withstanding, is of course Luigi's Mansion 3. And ever since this game was announced, I honestly feel like it just wasn't getting the respect it deserved. I really enjoyed the previous entries in the Luigi's Mansion series, but it just seemed like a lot of people didn't care about this game. Well, I was definitely happy to see Luigi's Mansion 3 was a thing, and I definitely thought it could be one of the best games of 2019. Well, I ended up picking up Luigi's Mansion 3 beating the game and now I want to do a review on this game and really see is Luigi's Mansion 3 one of the best if not the best games of 2019 for the Nintendo Switch. So sit back relax make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's jump into the world of Luigi's Mansion 3 for the Nintendo Switch. So Luigi's Mansion 3 starts off with Luigi, Mario, Peach, and some Toads going to a hotel that they were invited to for a little bit of a vacation, but on the first night things quickly go south. Surprise, surprise! Turns out there's a little bit of a bait and switch going on here. This isn't a standard hotel after all, and it is indeed filled with ghosts. Mario, Peach, and the Toads are then sucked into paintings which are scattered throughout this large hotel, and Luigi must free them. Of course, it's not a deep narrative, as most Nintendo games don't really have one of those. It's mainly just a catalyst for why you are in the area, and why you are doing the things you are indeed doing. Very early into the investigation of what's going on in this hotel, Luigi comes across the scientist, Egad, from the other Luigi's Mansion games, who just happens to be there, which is honestly convenient as hell. Teaming up with Egad, Luigi then gets a revised poltergust and sets out into the hotel to rescue his friends. Each floor of the hotel is pretty much a self-contained level with its own unique theme. The goal of going to each floor is to find an elevator button within the level in order to access more floors of the hotel, which is usually done by defeating the boss of the floor. The idea of each floor being its own level actually works out really, really well, as some of the themes here are just fantastic. You'll encounter things like a dance club, a history museum, a movie set, and much more. I think it really allows for a ton of creativity to keep each floor fresh, and it really makes you wonder what the next one is going to be, and there's tons of great details that make each floor feel unique and alive. Each floor has a lot of secrets as well, from hidden areas with stashes of money, references to other games, and hidden gems, no not the Metal Jesus kind. Gems are an optional collectible in the game, and each floor has a set number of gems to locate, most of which are small contained mini puzzles that you have to solve. It's not a main focus of the game or anything, but it can be fun to try and track down and collect all of these gems within the level, and it really encourages you to revisit floors after defeating bosses in order to try and track these gems down. Speaking of the gameplay, Luigi's Mansion 3 adds in some new gameplay mechanics for veterans of the series and newcomers alike. So if you've never played the previous games in the series, which honestly is a damn shame, the main thing you're doing in this game is collecting ghosts. Raggling up a ghost consists of stunning the ghost, and then you have to reel them in most of the time. Luigi can blind the ghost with the strobulb, which emits a large flash of light and will stun them, allowing you to reel them in. Some ghosts are smarter than others though and have defense mechanisms against the strobulb, which brings into account Luigi's new tools. Luigi has a suction shot, which basically allows him to shoot a plunger with a rope on it, and then suck in the rope with the poltergust to remove some of the defense mechanisms of the ghost, or is even used to solve a lot of puzzles. Luigi also has a burst jump, which sends out like a shockwave around him, and pushes ghosts back, destroys some of the environment that you're in, and can also be used for some very minimal platforming segments in the game. I actually kind of like these platforming segments and hope that Nintendo expands upon this if there is a, indeed a Luigi's Mansion 4. And once Luigi has wrangled in the ghosts, he can now slam them into the environment or into other ghosts to dish out additional damage as well. Luigi also has a dark light that allows him to see hidden areas or doors or scan things taken over by ghosts, along with Gooigi, a green goo Luigi clone that can assist in battles as well. All of these mechanics are also used in the puzzle solving of the game, which honestly for me is one of the highlights of the game. Gooigi can access areas that Luigi can't since he's made of this strange green goo, and he can basically slide into tight areas or use little warp pipes within the levels to get to other segments. Switching between Gooigi and Luigi is honestly pretty easy and is something that you need to become proficient in, as some of the later areas of the game definitely can have a heavy emphasis on teamwork and either solving puzzles or defeating bosses. I really enjoyed all the variety of puzzles, ranging from the mandatory ones to the optional ones, and I feel like Gooigi added to that aspect of the game. 
What's really cool about Guiji is he also allows for local co-op play. Guiji can be controlled by a second player at any time of the game, so drop in and drop out local co-op is available, and honestly, it's a pretty cool feature that definitely adds some replay value to the game. The game also offers a ton of content too, which honestly surprised me compared to the previous entries of the series. It took me about 10 and a half to 11 hours to beat the main story of the game, but there's the added gems hidden within the levels to collect as well. Visiting Egad in his little portable laboratory will allow for Luigi to deposit the ghosts and gems he has found within the levels and see how much more he has left to do. Aside from that, there are hidden booths within the levels to track down and eliminate along with hidden ghosts. After completing the game, I had a bunch of booze, gems, and hidden ghosts to find, which can really up the replay value of the game. What's nice though is that you can purchase things with the currency in-game to help you with that, such as a cartridge for your virtual boo, which is the map system used in the game modeled after a virtual boy in all of its red and black glory that I absolutely loved, that will ping you when a gem or a hidden boo is nearby, allowing you to find them a bit easier. Along with that, there are also multiplayer options in the game as well. We talked about the local co-op play, but there's also local multiplayer, which offers three different mini games that you can play with your friends if you happen to have any friends. I really don't, so I just checked out one of the modes by myself and left a controller on the ground, and it seemed pretty fun. Basically, I was just trying to raggle up ghosts and beat my opponent and get a higher score than them, but it did seem like a fun little time waster that I think would be fun with additional players. Aside from that, the Scare Scraper, which was introduced in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon on the 3DS, also returns, which has you playing with people online in order to clear out areas or collect a certain amount of gold and then advancing to the next floor. You can play with randoms, you can play with friends, there's some in-game voice commands if you get in a bit of a pickle, and of course you can use the fantastic Nintendo Switch Online Voice Chat app on your cell phone, because God forbid they put any native voice chat in one of their games. Still though, the Scare Scraper is honestly a lot of fun and definitely ups the replay value of the overall game. The presentation in Luigi's Mansion 3 is honestly absolutely top notch and features some of the best animations and visuals that I've seen on the Nintendo Switch to date. Every area is very lifelike and there's tons of stuff to destroy in these areas as well. When you're battling ghosts and slamming them into the environments, there's just some awesome destruction elements that happen with things flying all over the room. Luigi's facial animations are absolutely fantastic and really convey the message of him being scared out of his mind in this hotel. And each floor has a theme like I said and some of them just look absolutely gorgeous. The dance floor has some awesome lighting, the Egyptian level has some breathtaking set pieces, the movie set has an absolutely fantastic boss battle that has to be one of my favorite boss battles of 2019. It's honestly just one of the best looking Nintendo Switch games to date, whether you're playing it in handheld mode or in docked mode. I think handheld mode still looks very nice with this game, which is a key aspect of it. The audio in the game is great as well and features some very catchy tunes and some little voice samples here and there along with lots of sound effects. As far as complaints are concerned about the game, they are pretty minimal but I do want to mention them. First off, there's one boss battle that just absolutely sucks because of how it plays out in terms of the control. You're basically on this rubber duck, you're in water, you're trying to raggle in a ghost, you'll know it when you get to this segment of the game, and honestly, it's just frustrating as hell because it sticks out like a sore thumb compared to all the other awesome boss battles within the game. I actually probably died more on this one boss battle than I did in the entire game combined, so that really says something. The rest of the controls in the game do work great, however, but once in a while it can feel a bit cumbersome to move your flashlight in the direction that you want when you're moving in the opposite direction, which could just be a personal problem that I have that maybe other people won't have. Finally, the Luigi character himself kind of annoyed me a few times with his boobery and his fumbling of the elevator buttons, which causes you to do more after initially securing the button. And then once again, that might just be a personal problem that I had, but his incompetence was definitely not welcome in my eyes. Still though, the question remains, is Luigi's Mansion 3 one of the best, if not the best Nintendo Switch games of 2019? Let's wrap things up and find out. 
So is Luigi's Mansion 3 one of the best games on the Nintendo Switch and the best game for the system in 2019? I definitely think you can make a case for it. There's a ton of things to do in this game. The replay value is very high. Everything that the game incorporates is done very well. Sure, I had some minor nitpicks about the game, but as a whole, the game is an absolutely fantastic package from the visual style to the gameplay style to the collectibles, the online multiplayer. It's a really robust game and I really feel feel like it will stand the test of time. Luigi's Mansion 3 is a huge surprise for Nintendo Switch owners, and if you own a Nintendo Switch, I honestly feel like this is a game that needs to be in your library. I definitely think it's one of the best, if not potentially the best, games of 2019 for the system. And those are my thoughts on Luigi's Mansion 3, so let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And yes, I did not appear in this video because my lapel mic broke and my camera mic isn't working right. It's just been a pain in the ass. I'm waiting on a new lapel mic to come in so i had to do this a little bit differently when life hands you lemons you make lemonade so i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one later